So today we're going to be racking, degassing, and most importantly, tasting our sweet, sweet red wine. The cheap stuff. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching City Study. To learn to grow and brew and take control of your food, hit subscribe now. And don't forget to like and comment on our videos and hit that little bell icon so YouTube will know to notify you when we have something new to share. She's so cute. So yeah, as we said, today we're going to be uh, tasting that red wine. Now you did see a tasting already. That was with Savvy and Ben. That was actually the same recipe, just an older vintage of this same wine. So I thought, hey, you know what? It's time for this to be done. A lot of you have already written in telling me that yours is done. Ours has been done for a while. I just haven't had time to get to it. So today we're going to rack this off the lease. We're going to taste it a little bit. And then we're going to see, do I age it some more or do we just, oh yeah, I'm going to degas it too. Degas. This is one of the few times that I actually degas, and I do it wrong. I don't use a drill. I use manpower. Anyway, and women power, because she helps usually. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to rack this off the lease. Now, you're probably wondering, what's with all this complicated stuff here, the rubber band and whatnot? This bung, for whatever reason, I think it's too big, and it might have been a little wet, likes to push its way out. Of course, it's now naughty. it's not going to do it. Wow. It's a naughty bung. <laughs> The bung jokes. Seriously, guys. Um, anyway, so that can go into the uh, sanitizer water. One thing of note, this has been sanitized. This has been sanitized. Everything here has been sanitized. These have been sanitized. There's our bucket. There's our video. The paint bucket has not been sanitized. However, it will not be coming in contact with any wine that will be ingested at any point in time. And the paint bucket's optional. It's mostly just to get a little bit of height on this stuff so we can rack it because our friend Ben is still working on making us a racking rig. Hint, hint. But it's okay, because we're gonna try to get together too. and make a video of it for you guys. Okay, now, you will notice some things. I put the tube all the way to the bottom. She has that about halfway in. I'm gonna give this a couple of good pumps. You don't want to do too much. Just enough to get it going. And there it goes. The idea behind this is you do not want to introduce more oxygen than you have to. Okay. So we also don't want to stir up the lease. We don't want to get any of the lease in here. And we don't want to introduce any more oxygen than we absolutely must. This is still slightly fermenting, probably. I don't really know, okay? I'm guessing it's done just from past experience with it, but it might still be doing just a little teeny tiny bit. We're gonna test it in a minute and find out how much alcohol it's got and see how well it fermented, see how sweet it is, and then go from there. And here we are at the end. You always lose a little bit. Now, because this is bread yeast also, you want to be careful. The yeast doesn't settle into a nice yeast cake. It just kind of floats around the bottom. So you end up wasting a little bit more, but you can totally see the difference in these volumes. This was, you know, pretty good amount of headroom. And look here, it's almost full. So next step, what we're going to do, as soon as that comes out of here, you're fine. This, you can let it settle. I just dump it out. It's maybe half a glass or something. It's not that much. I don't worry about it. It'll taste bad. The next step though is degassing. Now, when I said before that I do it wrong, what I mean is I don't use the drill. You could, but I find it just as easy to just do this. Now, I know we said about oxidation. We totally said don't oxidize, but you gotta think about it. What's coming out of this as I stir? carbon dioxide, right? And other gases too. So if they're coming out and they're heavier than air, they're li literally pushing out and over the sides. There's no oxygen getting in here, at least very, very little. Also, this particular wine is meant to be drank green. You really don't want to age this too much. We found out that by aging it for six or seven months, it really didn't get better. It took on a different flavor that it was never meant to have. Um, it's supposed to be sweet. It's supposed to be light and refreshing and probably somewhere in the 11 to 12% alcohol range. So it's a light wine. It's not you know, gonna 
I mean, it, don't get me wrong, you can still get crocked on this stuff. But it um, tastes more like, as Savvy says, grape juice. So, as you saw me being oh so sneaky there, the benefit for our fancy schmancy labeling system is that you can take that tape right off the old container and put it on the new container and not have to make a new one. Now, if you notice how I'm doing this, I'm stirring in one direction, then I'm going backwards, and it creates that breakup of the wave and it lets all that gas out. This actually isn't even that bad. Usually it foams up a lot on me when I'm doing this. So this might have sat a little bit longer. We made this on October 4th and today is October 25th. So honestly that's three weeks. I usually don't let this go three weeks. Usually it's like 10 days and I, we're drinking it already. Life gets in the way. Lots of people have asked for lots of videos too. So we're trying to appease and trying to do more videos as we can. It's also um, back into busy season for our quote unquote real job. <laughs> Yeah. We're wedding photographers, for those of you who don't know, and here in Florida, the fall and the spring are primarily our big wedding months because of the temperatures are more pleasant than the summertime. Usually. Usually. 90 degrees, still. End of October. What the heck? So during the degassing process, because you are degassing, some of those unpleasant fumes may waft through the air. Don't freak out. That's a good sign because that means they're no longer in your beverage. When it starts to smell good, you've degassed enough. Or when your arm gets tired, you know, either one, whichever comes first. So what we're going to do now is take a measurement, just like we always do. Um, there's been a lot more discussion about hydrometers and stuff in some of the online groups to the point that some people are saying, I refuse to use a hydrometer because of modern tech. I don't want to use modern technology. Guys, this is like hundreds and hundreds of years old. This is not modern technology. I mean, I don't know when the hydrometer was invented, but it had to be a while ago. And this is not, we're not taking you from like, I, I don't know. It just, it blows my mind. I can understand the not using the chemicals and all the mass production stuff and things like that, but this will save your butt if you make something wrong. I've heard so many stories of people who added too much of something, whether it's sugar, honey, whatever, and because they didn't have a hydrometer reading, they had no idea. Also, if you are new at brewing, please, please use an established recipe first. So many people are jumping into it and they're just changing all kinds of stuff. If you don't know what you're doing, you may mess it up and waste money and waste time. It just doesn't make sense to me. To get an alcoholic beverage created, you need sugars and you need yeast. The racial relationship of these two things, we try to explain with visual aids in that video right there. Um, hopefully that will help you understand the fermentation and the brewing process, regardless of what you're brewing, a little better so you understand why things such as hydrometer readings can be helpful. For those of you who don't care how much your alcohol percentage is for your brews, don't figure it out. We're with you. We don't care either. <laughs> what we're looking for is something that tastes good. How far it finished out, where it, where Honest, it got to. Honestly, the lower the ABV, the better. Sometimes. In our case, because that means we just get to drink more before we get blitzed. They also tend to taste better. The more alcohol you have, the harder it is to make it taste good because more alcohol is in there. So the flavors that you might be used to that you're expecting aren't there, okay? Uh, this one actually came out at, wow, 10 1.028, 10.28 specific gravity. I'll have to do some calculations, but there's probably gonna be a little thing like right about here that'll tell you what the ABV is. I'm guessing it's somewhere between 11.5 and 12 off the top of my head, but that puts it at a really nice uh, table wine. Um, alcohol. Now, another thing that comes up a lot is people say, you never put that back in your brew. You always throw it away. I sanitized it. It's clean. Now, when you're making a brew, there's no point in worrying about it because you're not worrying about oxidation. You want to get more air in there. But for this, we're doing the tasting. This ain't going back in there. You may or you may not hear odd sounds in the background. It's our cats. That's our cat, Cassie. He is feeling lonely right now and wants some love, but unfortunately, he will have to wait. Clink, clink. 
No smell, no aroma, no 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 tasting notes, huh? Ryan is consistently giving me grief about how I do the process of toast and drink. There are rules about such things. Oh yeah. That I tend to not follow. This time I tried to follow it. it and he still gave me grief. You saw that, right? <laughs> we didn't say cheers, we just clinked. Well, isn't that We didn't do like a whole thing. It's okay. I'm sorry. So, the color. It is beautiful. It's red. <laughs> now, a quick thing that I wanted to say is normally for our beverages, we do a single racking. And we found that once we bottle after that single racking, sediment still tends to fall, up, fall into our bottles. And it's kind of yuck. I mean, it really doesn't matter because the shape of the bottle. Yeah. So we're going to a two rack rule. So now we're doing double racking. So this was our first rack. We'll rack again before we bottle. Um, but even with that said, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a gorgeous color. It has a, a lovely clarity to it. And keep in mind, this is straight out of the fermenter. So this is three weeks old. Hasn't been aged. Hasn't been racked yet. We just degassed it. This is what it comes out as. So all you people that were curious, oh, how can a bread yeast wine actually come out? This is what it comes out looking like, okay? It's nice and clear. It's got good clarity to it. It's not murky at all. The smell, I'm getting a lot of the grape and berry, berry smell it's and still, a little bit of spice. It still has a little bit of that funk yeah, slight, smell to slight, it. Slight, which is unusual. Usually it doesn't have that. But, but I'm getting spice off of it too. But like it's, uh, it's definitely better than before we degassed it. it. And it tastes beautiful. Oh, wow. It tastes like a sweet red wine. So my biggest complaint when we let this age too long, funny enough, is that it tastes like a real wine. <laughs> yeah. We, we've discovered that we're not fans of real wine. We like my wine better. <laughs> and I, I, I laugh and do the air quotes when I say that because this is wine and this is real and it's right here and I'm drinking it. Um, but I guess what we mean by that is we don't like... You talk. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's it's good. Is it we don't like really dry wines? Oh, yeah. um, I don't like dry meat either. So. so if you do prefer dry wine with a more complicated palate, then go ahead and let this sit for longer than what we suggest, yeah. and you may find that you actually like it, even though it's just cheap red wine made with bread yeast. Another thing I might actually yes, try with I this. Said that that you can try too, before I do it, is put the tea in it. Remember like I did the tea in the traditional meat and in some others too. But I think adding the black tea might give it a little bit more of a mouthfeel, a little bit more complexity. Even with that tone said, down the sweetness just a touch. When it, I, when one, I taste it, nice. it's sweet right off the bat. And then I do get a little bit of that tannic mouthfeel. Before it goes too much further, I'm gonna put a lid on it and an airlock. And this is going to sit for a couple more days, probably a week. Then I'm going to rack it again. You might be able to see from your point of view the pressure differential is already starting. Yep. Now, that could be simply because off-gassing is, off is still occurring. But might be a slight amount of fermentation. There may I, be I a it. slight um, secondary fermentation. Um, so we're going to allow that to happen in Brian's under desk storage area. What I'm actually doing is letting any of the lease that we might have sucked up that might still be in solution in there fall to the bottom again so we can rack it off again, let that sit for a week or two, then we bottle. Hopefully that way I don't have to tell people as soon as they start to pour about, oh, careful, there's sediment in the bottom. Because nobody really wants to do that. It's, it's just You kinda, learn as you go. Yeah. And does it change anything other than there's sediment in the bottom? In our experience, it really hasn't changed yeah. anything. We haven't even got off flavors. No, it. we really haven't. The reason why I, I always just let it happen is because I was always taught, home brew always has some amount of sediment at the bottom. Well, you know what? <laughs> Rules are made to be broken. I believe I want to produce a, a nice, clear, good tasting, good smelling beverage that doesn't have sediment and stuff floating in it. Now, doing that with bread yeast is hard it because is. bread yeast doesn't settle out. For some reason in the grape juice, it does. I don't get floaties in this. In the meads, I do. So we have to take care of that a little bit differently. So if you are able to get a commercial yeast and you want to take this just a little notch higher, I would suggest selecting a yeast that still has a low 
alcohol tolerance. Yeah, something like Nottingham, Bell Cezanne, things like that. They're like, well, Nottingham, be careful, because they changed their packaging, and we ran into that with another mead that we'll talk about another time. Yeah. But Bell Cezanne is nice. It's like a 14 to 15 percent. If you do that, if you do that, make sure you add a little bit more sugar so it goes beyond, just like we talk about in our ABV video. And that way you can retain the sweetness. Yep, and it'll stay sweet with a little bit more alcohol to it. It might give a little bit more tang because of the alcohol. What I would not do is use champagne yeast. Please don't do that. Or if you have to use champagne yeast, now you have to put so much sugar in to get it beyond that that you might actually make a stuck fermentation. So there is a range that's appropriate and there's a range that doesn't really work at all. To me, this is nice just the way it is. There's nothing to change really. Yep. I might try the tannins, but that's that's about the only thing I would really add yep. to it. That's all I got. Thank you so from yeah. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on City Setting. Have a great day. Hey everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you want to learn to grow and brew and take control of your food, hit the subscribe icon down below and don't forget to hit that little bell. That way you get notified of everything we do. And if you really like what we do, consider becoming a patron. Information in the descriptions of all of our videos. Thanks guys, have a great day. So today we're, uh, that was dumb. Um, hmm, damn, I don't have anything prepared. Okay. Um, so today we're going. <laughs>